Factions or groups have always been one of the most interesting things about manga and anime. The individuals they hold, their group goal along with their own individual dreams, their philosophies and how they differ from one another. This iconic dynamic makes for some really great writing and we meet some of the best characters of all time because of it. Like the Phantom Troop, the Akatsuki, the Survey Corps, Team Rocket, the Straw Hat, and the list goes on. But arguably the most Badass group is hands down the six great generals of Ken. They are a group of six monsters, all with one single goal in common, carrying them forward to have all of China under them. They go forth, bringing war, death, and chaos to every corner of China, and they are some of the most fascinating characters to read about. In the beginning of the series, the six great general system was abandoned, with only one living member remaining and a lack of worthy successors, and plus the huge vulnerability and risk it takes to even give someone the title of great general, the days of the six greats seem to be a thing of the past. The first generation consisted of Hakuki, Oki, Kyo, Okotsu, Kosho, and Shibasaku. It was because of these six that Kin's borders expanded exponentially and became a military powerhouse and the most feared kingdom. However, over the course of this series, these ranks have shifted to a whole new generation. Mobu, To, Ozen, Yotan, Tamwa and Kanki, with the sixth spot still up for grabs. However, before we get into detail, what exactly is a great general? It was during the reign of the 28th King of Ken, King Sho, a war-hungry monarch who dreamed of conquering and ruling over all of China and the Central Plains. He created this system to help him achieve that dream. With this title came the ability to freely wage war, meaning anytime, any place, a neighboring state could fall to ruins without the other kingdoms even knowing about it. With this freedom, Kin became the most dangerous state in all of the Central Plains during the era of the War God, and it would cause enemies to lock up their gates whenever one of their armies drew near, or some would simply open up their gates and surrender rather than challenge the famous group of great generals. To put this into perspective, we have met a shit ton of generals throughout the series of Kingdom. Some so strong they defy physics, and some so so smart, you feel like an idiot trying to understand their thought process. And yet all of those generals are still fodder compared to the six. We have seen Mobu, Oki, Yotanwa, To, Kanki, and almost every single member of the six literally go through and carve the way through entire armies like it's no big deal. Every state has their own form of showcasing their military strength. For Zhao, it's the three great heavens, and for Wei, it's the seven fire dragons. But the very idea of coming across and fighting a war against one of the six and their armies is a nightmare. The very idea is able to plummet an entire state's morale. That's what it means to be one of the six great generals of Kin. They have to have the ability to put the fear of God in everyone standing against them. So with that out the way, let's get into the first of the six greats. Oki, also known as the monstrous bird of kin, really sets the standard for what it really means to be one of the six. Often regarded to as the greatest general under the heavens, this man truly has no equal. I've already done a full video explaining why this man is the goat. While the first generation of six as a group possessed a lot of power and terrorized all of China, it was Oki himself that stood as the symbol of kin's military strength. With him being a genius in both offensive and defensive capabilities, Abilities, making him the most well-rounded general we have ever seen. He became the most dominant military force in King Shou's era of warfare. The way Oki was able to manipulate enemy armies all without leaving his own HQ, the way he was able to deduce the possibility of the presence of a second hidden Zhao army during the Battle of Boyu with nothing but his intuition after decades of warfare experience, Oki's brain really is just too big. Whilst it may seem insignificant, a lot of Oki's strategies are actually used today in the current timeline of Kingdom, like his flag communication system. His ability as a leader to raise his men's morale with his presence alone, while simultaneously striking fear into the hearts of the enemy, whenever Oki leads the charge, he would draw out a great deal of strength from his men to the point where they are described as demons. Oki possessed the greatest army due to his strict training regimen, and the fact 
fact that he was still able to turn them into even bigger threats with his mere presence alone speaks volumes. Renpa even stated that Oki's army gave out the most pressure out of all the six general armies. And this man just has the body and strength of a god. Slicing people in half with one hand and one swing, Oki is just overpowered done right. At the time of his death, there was not a single great general as hated by the masses of enemy states and kingdoms as much as him. Now this man is quite easily the biggest menace so far in Kingdom, and that should say something because Konki is here and he doesn't even come close to him. Hakuki hasn't been explored a lot so far in the series, but from what we do know, he's that guy. He's literally the leader of the six great generals first generation, so you know he's strong. According to Rempa, Hakuki was a cautious man who avoided taking risks and favored the counter-offensive play. But what made him so dangerous was not his terrifying strength and appearance, but don't get me wrong, just looking at this man is fucking terrifying. But what made him such a threat was actually his genius use of terrain manipulation. Hakuki demonstrated a rare talent for building strong natural fortresses and incorporating them into his strategies, always goading the enemy general and allowing himself to be chased so that he can finish them off at his mountain fortress which were constructed prior to battle. But what really sets this man apart from everyone else is the legacy he left behind. When Kaki he beheaded 100,000 Zhao prisoners and was questioned by Sei, the king of Qin. Sei had this to say, quote, We do not intend to have another Hakuki among our six great generals. You see, Hakuki took 400,000 Zhao prisoners after a war at Chohei and buried them alive, cementing his place in history as a guy not to be fucked with. Kyo is the only female member of the first generation of six, but don't get me wrong, she's an absolute dog. She was the secret daughter to King Sho and someone from the royal harem and the fiance to Oki. She was trained by Oki herself at a young age and was actually a close retainer of his, accompanying him to many battlefields and made a name for herself in these campaigns, earning her the title of general and becoming one of the six soon after that. Kyo and her army conquered cities of enemy states at an absurd pace, capturing 99 states in no time at all and a terrifying body count to go along with it. Kyo and Oki made a promise to get married after Kyo captured 100 cities and it would be on her 100th campaign where she would meet her end with the introduction of the character Hulken. Not to say that she didn't go down swinging, she definitely put up a good fight, but what can you do against a guy who claims to be the host of a violent god? Kosho is by far the most unique member of the six because he is the only one among them to be a genuine strategist and stays away from the battlefield. Kosho was the only member who rose in the military ranks by virtue of his strategic genius alone. Due to this, rumors spread among the masses of Kosho being the actual mastermind behind all of the great general's movements and war decisions. He was the one who taught Shohei-kun military arts and warfare, who is currently the head of military affairs of Kin and one of the greatest military strategists in the Central Plains. He also was the one who was aware and commended Ozen's strategic ability. Not much is known about him other than that. Probably the weakest member of the six as not much is known about this guy other than the fact that he waged a war against Chu but was injured during his encounter against a younger Kanmei and forced to retreat and it's assumed that he passed away from these wounds. So basically, this giant of a man who wielded a huge ass axe got his ass beat by another absolute giant who was just younger. What a letdown. In the manga, literally nothing is stated about this guy. Like, nothing at all. I mean, he looks sick as fuck in the manga, but going strictly from the manga, this guy holds no importance. But if you do a little research, then you know. Historically speaking, he may be the oldest member of the six as he served under King Sho's father, and he captured two states, Shu and Ba, which were used for agriculture, which even allowed Qin to begin the conquest of China. So without him, Qin never expands. These are the six that gave Qin the reputation it has in the current timeline. But the second generation is the one to conquer all of China, so it's obvious they would be some absolute monstrosities.
Mobu is the first great of the second generation. He's been the one pushing for the reinstatement of the sixth grade general system and has rightfully earned his position. Before Oki's passing, Mobu was a brute. He smashed his way through enemies with ease thanks to his terrifying strength. He was an arrogant, short-tempered man, not afraid to speak his mind freely and not giving a damn about the consequences. He considered himself the strongest general in all of China. Even coming face to face with Oki, Mobu remained confident in himself. But it would only be after Oki's passing where Mobu would be much more aware of his shortcomings and because of that, he became a far deadlier general. Quote, ever since Oki's death, Mobu's air has changed. The part of him that was sharp like a blade has settled down. But in exchange, I can feel a fierce fighting spirit swirling deep within him. Right now, Ken's most terrifying general is without a doubt, Mobu, end quote. Whenever you see Mobu on the battlefield, you know heads are gonna start flying. Whilst most generals we see favor weapons like glaives, swords, and bows, Mobu prefers a big ass mace. And I personally think it's because whenever he hits someone, he likes seeing their eyeballs pop out of their head. His immense strength is why he is one of the six. In the middle of the coalition war, there was only one man who could rival Mobu for the title of strongest general, and that would be Kanme, the same man who presumably killed Okotsu. And after beating each other non-stop, with bones literally flying out of their body, Mobu decides to stop playing around and squashes that man's head like a pancake, sealing the deal of him being the strongest. He is an absolute madman that literally defies common sense. Ko is the second great and was also the second in command to Oki's army, but he's no slouch either. Being an aide to a great general like Oki and then becoming one yourself, To carries a sense of dignity and pride with him. To really is in another league when it comes to fighting and carrying the team. To at the age of six was taught the arts of Razen, a very unique and powerful form of swordsmanship. And whenever you see him leading the charge and you see him start spinning his sword, you know it's wraps for the enemies in front of him. He's strong enough to trade blows with Hoken, so you know beating this man in a fight is not gonna be an easy thing. And honestly, I think Toe might be my favorite current general just because of the way he carries himself. He might not have the most outlandish feats like everyone else, but Toe definitely gives me Uncle Iroh vibes. Now Ozen is definitely the most intriguing member out of both generation of the sixes. He's the cousin of Oki and has served for the longest time in the Kin military for this current generation of greats, serving decades since the time of the War Gods era. Of course, having the same blood running through your veins as Oki and also being acknowledged by Kosho, the strategist for the first generation, you are destined for greatness. But King Sho never showed Ozen any favor due to his dangerous ambition of wanting to be a king. Even Mountain calls him the most dangerous individual in Kin because of his aspirations. And I think that's what makes Ozen such a chad of a character. Not only is his armor sick as fuck with a cool demon on it, but he was described by Rempa as someone who cares for his own life more so than his subordinates or even the battle. Ozen is just a very dangerous man. With his genius level intellect for warfare, with him having the same way of battle as Hakuki by not taking many risks and also using terrain manipulation to build fortresses, with him being able to glance at a castle and know its weak points, having bested Ribuku in strategy, and after beating his opponent, if they be worthy enough, he would ask them to become his subordinate so that he can have a strong army for the day he believes he will be king. Ohan, Ozen's son, described his father as, quote, a strength that stems from having discarded any needless emotions. Regardless of what happens, a mind capable of cold calculation and meticulous construction of the optimal strategy that will yield the most efficient results. That is the man known as Ozen. And as cruel and as cold-hearted as he may be, his fellow commanders and subordinates would gladly lay down their lives for him, as they have full faith in whatever he plans. Ozen made himself a cult with him as the leader, and that's why he's so dangerous.
Out of the 11 great generals, Yotama might possibly be the deadliest. Her epithet is literally the Lord of Death, so you know she means business. With her being a king herself, the Mountain King, she was the one that conquered all of the mountain tribes, and because of that, she now possesses the strongest army in all of China. Just to put it into perspective, one mountain man is easily able to take on 10 soldiers. Thanks to their brute strength and their savagery, these guys are just in a different league. This was made crystal clear when 50,000 tribesmen were able to defeat 90,000 strong Zhao soldiers. Just going against one of Yotamwa soldiers is able to put the fear of God into these regular Central Plain soldiers, and Yotamwa is the king of these people. Every single mountain tribe has fought against her, and every single one has lost. Her raw strength and leadership are vital to her as a general, as the mountain people only serve the strong. I'm not saying her strength is rivaling that of Mobu, but if I'm being honest, as of right now, I could definitely see her as a close second, but for sure top 3 strongest in the series. After all, during the Coalition War, after she came and saved all of Kin from being destroyed, Hoken went out looking for her as he has a sixth sense for finding strong opponents. And if Hoken comes looking for you, then you already have a seal of approval that you are a monster. I'm dinner. <laughs> <laughs> now, we already know what an absolute menace this guy is. Konki is one cold, heartless, depraved individual that just so happens to be a genius at warfare. The fifth great Konki is one man you don't want to go up against. He uses underhanded tactics, a master at guerrilla warfare, psychological warfare, and misdirection. He uses civilians as pawns, plays on your worst fears, and does so all with a smile on his face. Konki as a general is kinda overpowered. While his biggest shortcoming is definitely his inability to perform orthodox warfare, which limits his options in some battlefield situations, he uses that as a source of power. Konki is the king of outcasts and has every single bandit clan in all of Ken working under him, so he sticks true to his roots, fighting only for survival, money, and power. The reason Konki is such a strong opponent is because out of all the strategists in this series of kingdom, Kanki is not afraid of anything. He's not cautious like Ozen and Hakuki. He doesn't care how many men have to die like Shin and Oki. He knows exactly what it takes to win and does so with the utmost confidence. As I've said this before and I'll say this again, I would gladly have a fight to the death against someone like Shin or Oki than have a psychological battle against Kanki. When it comes to striking fear into the hearts of the enemies, no one is better at it than Konki. Now if you're a fan of Kingdom, then I'm sure you have thought about this before. So if you could build your own 6 great generals of Ken, who would they be? If you were king of Ken and trying to take over all of China, who are the 6 generals you would entrust this task to? Now my first round draft pick is pretty obvious. If you don't have this guy in your squad, you're, you, you're lost, alright? You're just dumb. And of course, I'm talking about Oki. He's the GOAT. It's as simple as that. There is no one better than him. He's the strongest character in the series. His experience and intellect are unmatched. And when you see this guy, other armies just give up. It's a no-brainer. He is, of course, my first round draft pick. Now moving on to my second round draft pick. Again, this guy is kind of a must-have. The legacy he left behind speaks for itself. I'm talking about none other than Hakuki. There is not a character in all of Kingdom that has crippled an entire nation like Hakuki did to Zhao. After what happened at Chohei, Zhao's morale was at an all-time low. Konki killed 100,000 soldiers and he became the most hated man in China. So imagine what burying alive 400,000 soldiers and civilians and what kind of reputation he had. Hakuki is the only guy to have literally crippled an entire state. So yeah. He's definitely taking my number two spot. And speaking of Konki, he of course makes this lineup. Like I said before, Konki's willingness to do whatever it takes for an absolute victory makes him an incredible threat to anyone. Plus the way he goes about war with his psychological warfare and guerrilla tactics and the powerhouses he has in his army, Konki is another must have. And I think these are the three generals that have to be in anyone's lineup. The rest is interchangeable and you can make a case for four, five, and six, but these three alone can cause a lot of damage to China and the other states. 
For my fourth round draft pick, I am taking Mobu. When it comes to just laying siege and taking territory, whilst also causing a shit ton of damage, Mobu is the guy I want for that. His strength is just such a force to be reckoned with, that it's dumb not to have him in my lineup. You can never have too many monsters on your team, and Mobu definitely classifies as a monster. For my fifth round draft pick, I'm taking Ozen, alright? In terms of strategy and tactics, I would say Ozen is on the same level of Ribuku. This was made clear after their one and only battle ended in a draw, but Ribuku also had to flee, so you could say Ozen won that. But just his raw talent at tactics, terrain manipulation, and his ability to point out weak points, he is a crucial member for the second generation, making him a must-have in my opinion. And for my final draft pick, I am taking Yotanwa, simply because her army is so valuable. The savagery and strength that comes from the mountain people make for the strongest army in China, and leading all of them is one of the strongest characters in the series, The Lord of Death. I think you would be kind of stupid not to take her. I mean, she's she's freaking broken. Oki, Hakuki, Kanki, Mobu, Ozen, Yotanwa. These six are my dream team. The six generals I think will lay waste to all of the other states and unify all of China with no problems. I know I only took Ken generals, but they are just so OP. I have enough strategists, so I don't need Ribuku. And plus, I think he's overrated anyways, because I see him run away more than actually win fights. Hoken is just a terrible general and was only made one because of Ribuku. I debated Renpa, but I didn't know who to switch him for. Shin doesn't have enough experience leading whole armies yet, and I really wanted to put Dukyo in my lineup, but I just couldn't do it. So I'm confident my draft picks. Let me know your dream team down in the comments below. But anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video. And really quickly, I just wanted to say thank you. I know I'm a little late, but a couple weeks ago, I hit 1,000 subscribers and that's kind of crazy to me. I somehow managed to scam 1,000 people to click subscribe off of my videos and I'm just sitting here mind blown. I make videos for fun. I don't make money off of this. I don't have any sponsorships or anything. I literally make content because I enjoy it. And the fact that 1,000 people click subscribe means I'm doing something right. So yes, thank you all for just being here, I guess. It means a lot more than words can describe. I'm not one to get super emotional. So let me end this rant by saying this. Thank you each and every one of you who clicked on my videos, who leave comments and subscribed. I love you a lot. And although you are all complete strangers to me, yeah, I fucking love you guys. And I'll see you next time.